So in a way, this is not the sort of story that I want the News at Kate series to be focusing on, but it's everywhere and it's being represented so badly and so horrendously that I guess I've just reached a point where I feel like I need to talk about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. And first of all, nobody seems to be talking about what is actually going on. So let me just give you some facts about the situation. There have been two previous court cases involving this situation. First of all, in 2016, Amber Heard went to court and she said that Johnny Depp was extremely violent to her repeatedly. Uh, and she sort of highlighted like 14 separate occasions. She talked about having her nose broken, so on and so forth. And the court agreed with her and they granted her a restraining order against him. And then she went on and got divorced and they separated. And then in 2020, she wasn't doing anything but but the Sun newspaper described Johnny Depp as a wife beater and he took them to court uh, saying that it wasn't true. And again, like all kinds of stuff was dragged into court and at the end of the situation, the court agreed that it was overall basically true and, and, they, and, so, and so he wasn't, he lost that case and that was the end of that. And now there is a new case because Amber Heard has written an article in which she doesn't name Johnny Depp in any way or anybody else. She just says that she has become a figurehead for victims of domestic violence. And he is now suing her, claiming that that is some sort of defamation. And here's the thing. We've already had two court cases that have demonstrated that he was violent to her and that he was a problem. And yet now, all of a sudden, I'm hearing left, right and centre that this new case somehow demonstrates that, oh, they were both as bad as each other or, oh, it's just a bit complicated and it's all a bit of a mess, isn't it? He is a violent abuser. And the claims that have come up that, like, are oh, she, are oh, they're just as bad as each other. No, he has claimed that there are some minor incidents in which she retaliated by shouting and pushing and things like that. And to suggest that that makes them just as bad as each other is a part of the problem around how we talk about domestic violence, because there is a huge power imbalance between the two of them, partly because she's a woman, yes, although it's not to say that that's the only power imbalance that can happen. She was 22 when she met him and he was in his 40s. He is a much, like, more powerful and much wealthier individual. There was this huge power imbalance between them. He you know, then he broke her nose, all this other stuff happened. There are previous partners of his who've talked about him being violent. He is friends with other men like Marilyn Manson, who are notorious for being violent to partners. And, you know, he's made no distance, no attempt to distance himself from those people after the allegations have become public and been confirmed. The idea that it's some sort of 50-50 situation is part of the mess that when a woman steps forward and says that she's been a victim of male violence, she is somehow expected to be this like perfect model victim and that anything, you know, like she can have her entire life and her entire history dredged through for any, for any cross word. You know, one of the things that's been being said about her is that she got angry when he didn't go to her birthday party. But do you know what? You're actually allowed to get angry if your partner doesn't go to your birthday party. That in fact, it's legitimate. In fact, I would worry about you if you don't. Like, why are you dating this person who doesn't even show up to your birthday party and you haven't even raised the issue? I want want women to feel confident talking about these things without feeling like it makes them a bad person. And we spend, you know, hours and hours in our society saying that the way to prevent women being victims of domestic violence is to teach them self-defence. Why not, you know, go to the gym, work out, learn martial arts, blah, blah, blah. And then when a woman reaches her limit and pushes back, we go, oh, well, see, they're just as bad as each other. There's nothing going on here, even when Previous court cases have over and over again demonstrated that he is the aggressor and he's the problem. And this latest court case is not even about establishing whether or not one or other of them is a problem because he's already been established to be a problem. That's been proven in a court of law. And what this case is about is the way that abusers can take a victim and re-victimise them by dragging them back through the courts over and over again, even over the tiniest little things like a newspaper article in which she calls herself, you know, an advocate for victims of domestic violence and how women who speak out are victimised and bullied and humiliated over and over again and dragged through the mud and 
cases like this, when we continue to focus on them and we continue to allow perpetrators to make this scale of scene and, and, and take their that take what they're saying seriously and refuse to look at the actual facts and the basics of the case this makes it more and more difficult for women to come forward and for victims of violence to come forward and it makes it easier and easier for powerful perpetrators to re-victimize people and I just feel like didn't we come through the Me Too movement? Weren't we all going to do better? Didn't we watch the documentaries about people from the 70s and 80s and go, no, 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 we're not going to live like that anymore. We're all going to do better. This is our opportunity to do better. And one of the things we need to do is to stop fanning the flames of publicity around this case. Um, and the other thing we need to do is to just take these things sensibly and at face value and look at the facts. And the facts are that this is a victim of domestic violence being re-victimised by an aggressive perpetrator and it's time that people stopped putting him in films, stopped paying him to advertise their perfume and stopped talking about him as though what he's doing is legitimate or reasonable or fair or nice or any of those things. See you next week.